Hello everybody. So I'm just checking in, having a little lay down. So lately, I, I don't know what's going on. I have two really sore ribs. Uh, on the left side, it's the floating ribs. And on the right side, it's, I think it's ribs six or seven. It just feels like they're broken, but I'm pretty sure they're not broken, but um, they hurt like they're broken. So I'm taking a break right now. I figured, hey, I may as well upload a video and show what's going on. My little kitty is here keeping me company, <laughs> Dylan. But um, it's, I've had broken ribs. In fact, it was when I was, it was before I was diagnosed and I had quite a few tumors. I had over 20 tumors and I had three fraction, fractured ribs. It was extremely painful, but I still managed to go to work and, you know, but it was really difficult to get through the day. And that's kind of what it feels like now. You know, I, I try to stand up for too long and it feels like I, I get short of breath because it hurts so hard, much to breathe or cough or God forbid sneeze. But um, it's funny that then I can do other things and it doesn't hurt. So I'm, I'm feeling that it's a soft tissue issue. Uh, my last scan that I had in November, late November, um, I did have some tumors in between like, well, actually they weren't in between the ribs. They were uh, between the rib, the inside rib wall between that and the lung. It wasn't in the lung. It was next to the lung. And that could be, you know, causing the problems. I'm hoping not because if that's the case, then it means my cancer is progressing and that would be bad. I'd rather it be the autoimmune disease, the, what do you call it, uh, uh, call, he calls it an overlap with my myositis. So, um, but I don't know. I just, I wanted to go away. <laughs> Ow. Ow. And the right ribs hurt when I laugh. But anyway, um, so my scan was supposed to be a week and a half ago and it's been rescheduled for this Friday. Hopefully with all this stupid panic over the coronavirus, which is no more deadly than the flu. Well, maybe it's a little more deadly for the flu for certain groups such as myself. But otherwise, I'm pretty healthy. You know, I'm, I think even with my medications and stuff, I'm not on the really harsh chemo. And my prednisone doses come down quite a bit. So um, I'm not as at risk as I was before. Not to mention the fact that I'm also on um, hydroxychloroquine. It's, it's, they use it for malaria and they've found that that helps to kind of fight off the infection. So even if I did get exposed, I'm more protected than I would be otherwise. So I'm not, I'm sure I'm not hundred percent protected, but at least my body's got a little help to fight off any kind of flu bug, hopefully with that. But, um, you know, kind of the whole thing with this coronavirus is, you know, I'm in that, I'm in a double risk group. You know, if I, I'd be more so if I had like age to top it off, but it's like, I don't know why everybody's panicking. If people would just shop normally and, and, you know, be fair with stuff. I mean, the week before they announced the pandemic, you know, a pandemic is just means it's worldwide. It doesn't mean it's more deadly, but a lot of people just don't know how to actually go online. And what does that word mean? It just means it's world worldwide. It doesn't mean anything else, but they panic. They go, oh God, everybody's going to die. It's going to be the black pig. No. Ugh, so annoying. I feel so horrible for all the small businesses, everybody who's living paycheck to paycheck. All this panic is going to cause so much economic problems for people. It's, I just, I'm, I'm really worried about those people because they're, they're the ones who are going to suffer the most. You know, they're going to be, you know, how am I going to pay my electric? How am I going to buy food? How am I going to buy gas? Because of all of this panic over a stupid flu. That's all it is. It's just like any flu, people get sick and die. And it's mostly the really sick and elderly. The really old and already infor inf infirmed. But no, we're going to panic and shut everything down and cause an economic downturn. And, and, and people are going to end up homeless because of the greed and the selfishness and people are going to, you know, not have food, especially those who are already, you know, having a hard time getting out or only get, you know, paid every two weeks. If they, if they didn't have money when that first pandemic was announced, they're out of luck because now the, now the, you know, most of the essentials are gone because some of the people panicked and bought 50,000 rolls of toilet paper, greedy son of, you know, what, you know, I can understand maybe stuck up for an extra week. An extra week, maybe, like for me, I'm a, I'm a single person living home. I use maybe or maybe one to two rolls a week, okay? 
So a 10 pack would last me for like two months. Okay, people, why do you need to buy freaking 10 packs of, tw you know, 36? Be reasonable. Stop being selfish. Now, now people, I haven't, I haven't seen toilet paper in the shelves for, for two weeks now. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. You know, I, I can't keep going out and, and as time goes on, more people will be, you know, carrying this, this bug. I mean, I still have to be cautious, you know. I mean, for God's sakes, I have cancer and an autoimmune, so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a double whammy. But why? Why go out and be greedy like that? You should be, anybody who's done that should be ashamed of themselves. Greedy people. Selfish, greedy people. That's immoral. I hope if anybody, anything learns, we learn anything from this thing, is we need to, as a nation, we need to work on our morality. Because that is, I mean, not everybody, not everybody did that, okay? Not everybody was greedy and selfish and, and fear-mongered. But there were enough to clear the shelves. And those people who did that, they need to be re-educated. It's ridiculous what they've done. You know, ugh, just so annoyed. You know, and even though there's, in the whole state of California, at this time I'm making this video, there was only 300 and I think 66 cases, according to the CDC, as of 4 p.m. that, that evening, um, in the entire state of millions. And they're already locking down like a whole, like, Four or five Bay Area counties have locked down completely because of a few hundred cases. Yeah. I, this is ridiculous. I feel bad for all those businesses that are trying to pay their employee, employees. You know, they're sending people home. And, they, oh, well, the, uh, you know, the unemployment people, they're going to give you money. You know, we just got to apply for benefits. But then we forget that uh, when you do that, you only get 60 to 70% of your normal income. So people who are already living paycheck to paycheck, well, now they won't be able to pay their bills because 60 to 70% of what was already paycheck to paycheck will not be enough. So, yeah. You know, people who are renting. So if, if, the, if the people who aren't renting aren't getting their money, how are they supposed to pay their mortgages on those properties? It's, it's a horrible chain effect. There has to be a balance between you know, being cautious and then being ridiculously stupid because this is, this is stupid. I mean, our county hasn't shut down yet, but I'm sure it's coming. The schools are shut down, which in a way I think is good because we know, all know kids are germ factories, right? We know that. And I think that was not a bad idea, you know, especially while we're trying to get all this under control to keep it from getting too heavy. But for most people, this, the stupid coronavirus is just a flu. It's a respiratory infection. You know, everybody's buying toilet paper like it's going to be the shits, like in one H one. Okay, it's not. It's not the shits. Okay, it's just a respiratory infection. So you don't need to. You don't need to go and buy fifty thousand rolls of toilet paper because you know, unless you need to blow your nose a lot. Because I mean, come on, people, really. But like today, we went out to uh, breakfast in here, in a little town down here in the San Joaquin Valley, and the people were so grateful that we came. There was, you know, three three people, three different tables eating there. And this, this store has like 20 tables and they usually have more people there. And they're like, they were so grateful to have someone come and eat breakfast because they need to pay their bills. They still have electricity. They still need to buy food. They still have to pay their bills. You know, if everybody stops going out, none of these businesses will be able to pay their bills. I hope people realize that. So if you're able to, if you're young and healthy, just be cautious. You know, try not to touch too many things, but, you know, keep spaces between you. But go out and eat. Go buy stuff. Just be cautious. Don't just be hygienic. Be aware of your surroundings. You know, try not to touch too many things. That Unless you're going to buy it and put it in your cart and take it home. You know? But spend money like you normally do. Just go out and be, you know, conscientious of your contact with other things that could be harvesting, you know, harp. <laughs> Providing you with germs. Don't be scared. Be cautious. Be aware. That's all it takes, people. We need to help each other out in this time. We need to stop letting fear rule our lives. For God's sakes, I have cancer and autoimmune. I'm at that high risk group. But I still, I went out shopping yesterday. I was just very conscious to clean the cart before I grabbed it. 
and I tried not to touch too many things. And when I got home, I washed my hands. All right. And I just tried to keep my space. I didn't try to get too close to people in line. I just, you know, just, just be mindful when you are out. That, that's all it takes. You know, if you see, if you hear someone coughing, okay, don't go anywhere near that area. Or if you're really nervous, maybe, maybe just like leave that whole aisle and not shop down there and just go ahead and get what you have and leave. But you still need to go out and spend money like you normally do as much as you can before these businesses end up going bankrupt and people are, are just, it's just bad. We need to help each other out, guys. All right. So anyway, when I get my scan, I'll let you guys know how it is. Hopefully it's not the cancer. Hopefully it's just the inflammation from the stupid autoimmune because that would be a lot easier to treat than the cancer. I'm already thinking it's probably the cancer, but I hope not. But um, yeah. You know, don't let fear rule your life. I mean, hello, cancer, not a mean. I'm not letting fear rule my life. I've, I've lived with this now for years. You know, we never know when our time's going to come. Go out and live, you know, help each other out. That's what life is about. See you guys later. Bye.